I greet you all in the beautiful and precious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. And yes, the hour has arrived. And it is yet here again upon us, where you and I can just become quiet. Greetings from our own dwelling place, our home. And myself and Neely wants really to just come and tell you that we are so grateful and thankful unto the Lord for His mercy, His grace, His loving kindness that He bestowed upon us so freely. The prayer of our hearts today is that God will come and sustain you through His Word. And at the end you also may feel that, Lord, it's worth it. He's the only one who can give us something worth living for. I wonder if I can ask you just to close your eyes. We're going to pray. I'm going to say thank you, Lord, for this opportunity. Thank you for being so kind and so good unto us. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we appreciate you today. Oh Lord, it's with a heart filled with praise and thanksgiving that we approach your throne of grace and mercy in acknowledging and recognizing that you are our Savior. Lord, it's because of you. That's why we can face tomorrow. Because you are in control. Thank you that you've spared our lives. Thank you that you have given us again this opportunity right here now. Perhaps for some in the afternoon, in the morning, in the evening. But here we are. Thank you, Lord, that you have been good to us. Take us through this service. Be glorified, be honored, and be exalted in and through our lives, in Jesus' name. And to that, you and I can say, Amen. Bill and Gloria Gaither wrote a song. It became well known throughout decades now. And the verse says, God sent His Son. They called Him Jesus. He came to love. He and forgive.
just to worship this great King of glory who has done so much for you and me, whose love is unconditional and he still has that love for you and me on a daily basis. Beloved, I would like you to turn with me to Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. And I would like to read a couple of verses there today, but I'll do that as I go along ministering the word, but I want to start off with verse 13 of Philippians 4. And the word of God comes to us saying, I can do all things which he has called me to do through him who strengthens and empowers me to fulfill his purpose. I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. I am ready for anything and equal to anything through him who infuses me with inner strength and confident peace. Now, taking my scripture reading from the Amplified Study Bible, I think it deserves to be read one more time. I can do all things which he has called me to do through him who strengthens and empowers me to fulfill his purpose. I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. And I love this. 
I am ready for anything and equal to anything through him who infuses me with inner strength and confident peace. May the Lord bless his word upon our hearts. Isn't this just lovely and awesome? I have titled our sermon for today, A Life Worth Living For. And allow me to start off with a question. Do you feel in this moment, right here, right now, that your life is worth living for? Do you think that there is something that you can live for that is worth it and that makes it worth while to be still alive and on this earth whereas we are experiencing so many difficulty and so many problems trials and tests and yet it seems like it just goes on and on and there's no end to it but allow me today just to come and speak to you a little bit on this topic a life worth living and what really catches my attention is that the Apostle Paul, especially when you read Philippians, the Apostle Paul also or almost give us that sort of an idea that he jumped out of bed every day. He was excited for the day to start and he couldn't wait for the day to begin so that he can start sharing his faith in Christ Jesus with those who are in need of it. He had almost had that sort of an enthusiasm and zeal where he wants to portray a message, nothing is going to stop me. This is what God did for me through his son Jesus Christ and nothing is going to stop me to come and share this. And if I can almost word it in a sense like he almost wanted just to do somersaults of simply being so excited because of what God did in his life. And we do not have time today to go into the life of the Apostle Paul, but we know, we know what he did, we know where he came from, we know what his daily life was like. And yet, yet here, he, he portrays a life as if he never gets discouraged. He, he never feels sad. Yes, he did go through trials and tests and tribulations and he was ridiculed and all of these things. And yet he still, he lived. And then he will come up with this wonderful encouragement in verse 13 of chapter 4, I can do all things through Christ Jesus who gives me the strength. So that makes one wonder, where are we? Where are you and I? Also being saved by the blood of Jesus, also being baptized, also being filled with Holy Spirit, and we, we really boast in the fact that we are Christians, and for that matter, that we are born again, and that we love Jesus. And yet sometimes it is so hard. Sometimes it is as if there is coming something my way that I feel I have lost the sense of living and it's not worth it. And yet the Apostle Paul simply just come in and he, he describes in this letter to the Philippians a life which one can almost hardly think is possible. And yet he didn't stop. If you turn with me to Philippians 2 verse 13, he says, For it is God who is at work within you, enabling you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. And Paul realized that. That made it worth for him living. That made it absolutely worthwhile, knowing irrespective of what may happen the next day or what will come today. He knew that God was working in him. Because I almost wanted to say it the way that the Apostle Paul said it. For to me, living is Christ and dying is gain. 
And I'm just honest with you, beloved, today. Many a time, I will just be quiet within myself and say, Lord Jesus, come. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Lord, just come and fetch us. Just take us out of this world with all of its follies, with all of its sin, with all of the iniquity, all of the wrong, the evil. Just come and deliver us from this, Lord, so that we can be with you. There where we will have peace. You go on to Philippians 3, and, and I want to read us verses 10 and 11. He says, I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death, if somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. And let me tell you today, if we believe that Jesus was raised from the dead, we are going to be resurrected as well. We're going we're gonna to stand up. God is going to resurrect us, that I can assure you, on the day the trumpet is going to sound. And oh, beloved, I'm looking forward to that. I don't know whether Jesus is going to come and fetch me still while in this life, or whether he will come on the clouds of glory. But I'm ready for either. Are you? Or is your life of such that you feel it's not even worth Inhaling or exhaling, it's not even worth to waste my words because life is so difficult and everything seems to be so messed up and I don't know really whether God cares or not. So I'm not sure whether I am living a life worth living. Well, I want to tell you today, I am. I am living that life because of what he did. And, and that makes me so excited that just brings into my heart something that I, I want to shout it out. I want to scream on the top of my voice. Lord, you are so good. Listen, people of this world, Christ Jesus, what he started, he will accomplish that in your life. If we look at Philippians chapter 3 and we read verses 13 and 14, he says, But this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and Straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. He called me to do what I'm doing. Yes, I ran away, believe me. I ran away for many years. I didn't want to get involved in this because, Lord, I just simply feel that the task is too big. But when he called, I had to listen. You see, because he's not gonna, he's not gonna impose himself. He's not gonna come and force himself on you. He will never do that. But he will give us the opportunity to have a heart and ears that's willing and able to hear and to receive. Philippians 4, verse 4 to 9, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And I've ministered on this some time back. That peace that surpasses all understanding. Peace, peace, wonderful peace. Coming down from the heaven above. Sweep over my spirit forever, I pray, in fathom, fathomless billows of love. Peace. You see, because the peace that he gives and the peace that he brings make it a life worth living. May I? Peace, peace, wonderful peace, coming down from the Father.
And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And that makes it a life worth living for. And then, of course, the verse that we've read, I can do all things through Christ Jesus. You see, Paul tries to point out a life that is worth living, a life that is centered on the life of and the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And, and he's trying to portray that kind of life where you and I want either to backflip or do a somersault or jump up and leap with joy because of the fact that he is in control. Or are we still there where we wake up in the morning and, oh, this is going to be a dreadful day. I woke up with a headache and God knows I'm not sure whether I will manage this day and everything is so just difficult and not worth it. But the Apostle Paul gives us, and I read to you those verses that are so special in this letter that makes one so excited, especially when he says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Irrespective of what's happening, rejoice in the Lord. Be happy, be glad. The little chorus that we grew up with says, I'm so glad Jesus lifted me, singing glory, hallelujah. Jesus lifted me. You see, he offers, in what we have read, he offers us today three Three ways for us to live that life with living. Three reasons that can make it easier for us to understand. And, and it will make also a huge difference in our lives. And the first one is, is having a purpose in life. If you and I do not have a purpose in life, if we do not understand and know why we are here, we won't feel that our lives are a life worth living. So many people just say, oh, well, I have been born into this world. I grew up, went to school, went to varsity. I got a wife or um, a husband. I got married. I've got children. I'm waiting to die. And that's it. And it's over. No, there's much more to it. There's a life in which you can rejoice always in the Lord. And you can show people by example in your life how good God is unto you. A life worth living because of what Jesus did on the cross of Calvary. So do you have a purpose? Do you really have that purpose where you feel, Lord, when I wake up in the morning, I, I wake up because it's a wonderful day. It's a beautiful day. It's a glorious day. It's a day given by you, Lord, and I'm going to live it to the fullest extent because it's a life worth living for in what you did on the cross of Calvary for me. We can try and do all things. We can try everything in this life. But if Christ is not there, we can go through all of the courses and we can go to seminar after seminar and conference after conference. But if we do not live this God and experience him firsthand as a reality, nothing is going to happen. You and I have to way of thinking here because we have to be renewed in our minds, understanding that it's a life worth living for while we are on this earth. Amen. Some years back, and I know that there were a lot of churches who, who also applied that and who used it. Pastor Rick Warren's book, Purpose Driven Life. And that was done over 40 days, I can recall. I also presented that as a sort of a course, as, as a study, a Bible study for 40 weeks. And then I'm, I'm just thinking... If you listen to this sermon today and perhaps you have went through a Bible study like that, a purpose-driven life for 40 days, what happened since the time that you finished that? 
And when the 40th day came to an end, where are you now? Are you still living a life that's worth living for? Are you still rejoicing in the Lord? Can you still do all things through Christ Jesus who gives you the strength? You see, it's one thing to read it. It's another to say it. It's another to live it. And it asks more, church. Beloved, it asks more and requires more to live it. A life worth living for. And when Jesus came and he, he just changed my life, I cannot tell you how thankful I am unto the Lord. It took some time. It took a while. Because Andre kept on running away. Didn't want to hear. It was easier. Oh, no, Lord, just to have a supportive ministry. But God said, no, it's time. I want you for something else, something special. I'm calling you to bring my unadulterated word. I want you to speak the truth, Andre, and nothing but the truth. People need to hear the truth, son. Whether they like it or not. Whether it's pleasant or not. Whether it's convenient or not. You have to speak the truth. Because truth shall set them free. You see, the moral of the story is not to try to be somebody else. Living a life worth living for. When you repent, when you got born again, you and I cannot live someone else's life. We have to live the life Christ called us to live. You and I have to live that life which was foreordained before the foundation of this earth and before everything started, you and I have been called by name. He knew us in the same manner that he knew us when he was on the cross. You see, because when he was on the cross, you and I, were on his mind. You see, Jesus invites us to follow him every day, every single day of our lives. We cannot exclude a day. We've got to be on top of that every day. I cannot live a life, listen, belonging to him only on a Sunday. But from Monday to Sunday, I need to, life, to live a life worth living for. And that life worth living for is the fact that Jesus died. He changed me. He washed me with his blood. I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. All things have passed away. I'm born again more than a conqueror. That's who I am. I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. Are you? Can you confess that today, that you are a brand new man in Christ? So the first one is having a purpose in life. Number two, serving others. Excuse me, Andre? Yes, you heard me correctly. Serving others. We're not just here for ourselves. And that second way is, is to, to be able to serve others, to be there. In other words, to, to give, to share what Jesus gave him, to share that with others. We know that Paul wrote more of the, of the letters of the New Testament books. Paul wrote them. And it's not because it's by coincidence. It's because it's planned like that. God decided that it would be because the Apostle, the Apostle Paul speaks of the new life, the new man in Christ. Do you hear me? And that makes it so all the more excited. So it's when we serve others in the name of Christ that we are able to live a life that is worth living for. We sang it. I want to live the way he wants me to live. I want to love until there is just no more to love. I want to give until I can't give anymore, but I can never outlove the Lord. Do you hear me? Oh, it's so great just to be his hand extended. It's so great just to be able to, oh, that makes it so exciting for me. And, and, and can I, can I just please? Oh, to be. Extended. 
The first one is a life with living for is knowing and living a life that you know that you have a purpose. In the second place, serving others. Bill Gaither and Gloria Gaither wrote a beautiful song that says, Loving God, loving each other, making music with my friends. Loving God, loving each other, and the story never. see, oh, we must understand that if you and I can grasp the fullness of what the Word of God teaches us, then I want to tell you, you will understand. And this is why it's so beautiful for us to, to see how God can use us. And I want to, I want you to, to make sure, it doesn't matter how big or how small it is, but to serve others. I can recall and relate it to a little story that happened where it was shared with us by another preacher where he said that this guy approached him and he said that he wanted to be a prophet. So this guy said, okay, my brother, if you want to become a prophet, as I want you as from next Sunday, I want you to pick up all the tissues and the paper lying around after service. And the man said, I, I, I don't think you understood me clearly. I said, I want to become a prophet. He says, yes, no, I've heard you the first time. I heard you. But I first want you to start picking up the papers and the tissues. It's not my job. That's what we will think. I'm not going to pick up a used tissue. They can take care of itself. The person who threw it down can pick it up. You see, beloved, if we cannot be faithful to the little things, how will God and how will we be able to be faithful to the bigger things God has in store for us? Every act of service, every act of service which is in the name of Christ, doesn't matter great or small, seen or unseen, doesn't matter. It helps us to live a life that is worth living. What did he give you to live for? Did you ask him to give you that life? Because he gave, certainly he gave me a life worth living for. And I want to use it to the best I can. I never want to stand guilty. I never want to be in a position where I have to say, Lord, but uh, I've got this excuse and that excuse. I never want to be there. I rather want to do how big or how small, seen or unseen. 
sometimes at school. You know what children are like, they will just throw down papers and they will litter everywhere as if that is the norm and that's the standard. Many a time I will find myself walking on the campus ground, going from class or between classes, walking, just watching what is going on and perceiving what's going on, seeing and the papers lying down, and I will simply just stoop down and I will pick it up and throw it in the dustbin, whether people see me or not. Are you willing to do that? A life worth living asks a man and a woman to go beyond that which they are normally used to do. Believe me, beloved. So three reasons for a life worth living, living with purpose, serving others. In the third place, living a life of integrity. And last Sunday, I spoke to the congregation about this There are not many men and women with integrity anymore. And that is to be blamed, listen to me very carefully, to an undeveloped character. I haven't learned what it is to grow. I haven't learned what it is to strengthen my roots. I want things the easy way. I don't want to struggle. I just want it on a silver plate and that will just help me to smooth line cruise through this world. And the Bible never, never promises that. It's not an easy road. The songwriter says we are traveling to heaven because it's, it's a very difficult path you and I have to walk. You see, Paul here encourages people in, in the church at Philippi to live a life in a manner worthy of the gospel. Are you and I living that life worthy of the gospel? Are we truly living Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday? Are we living each and every day worth living the gospel of Jesus Christ? Hear me out today. It's important for me to share with you. And we all know how important it is not just to talk the talk, but to walk the walk, to do, preach what you practice. Practice what you preach. I don't know how many of you can recall the quote that is attributed to St. Francis of Assisi. Preach the gospel at all times, if necessary, use words. Preach the gospel at all times, if necessary, use words. That's why I'm bringing you this word. That's why I'm teaching you and coming to you to tell you what God's word is saying. Oh, beloved, it doesn't matter how big or how small, seen or unseen, I already said. Can I tell you again today, please, and listen to me? Our words do matter. Do you hear me? Our words do matter. Our actions do matter. Not only our words, but our actions. As I'm growing older and really become more mature in the Lord, I... I just love expressions. And there's one that says that you and I freely quoted that whatever, what goes around comes around. And then we know that the word of God says that death and life lies within the power of the tongue. And he who uses it frequently shall reap the fruit thereof. Actions speak louder than words. Our action sometimes speaks louder than our words. How do we conduct ourselves? Are we living a life of integrity? Reminds me of a little story of a young officer who was considered for a promotion. And 
he stopped to purchase a newspaper. So a passerby dropped some coins in the machine, took out a paper, and then he held the door open for the officer. Go ahead, take one. Nobody will know. He offered. For a moment, the officer held the door as the man went his way, and finally he shut the door. He inserted his own coin and took out the newspaper. And I want you to listen to this. And later in the morning, in the interview for his job promotion, the attending general retold what had happened at the newspaper box. I watched to see what you would do. Had you taken the paper without paying, I was determined to pass you over for the promotion, he said. You see, I am looking for a, a people of character who live their principles even when no one is around. Are you? A life worth living. You see, God calls us, he's calling us back to a place where we will back up our words with actions that we will do. That we will not become just mere listeners, church, beloved, but also doers of the word. Our actions, that you and I will become a man and a woman of integrity, where people will see a life with purpose, serving others, and live with integrity. My yes is yes, and my no is no. Being ready. Being ready to, to live there where God says, I am pleased. I want to close with our opening verse. I can do all things. I can do all things through Christ Jesus who gives me the strength. Do you hear me? We can. You can. I can. Yes. Because he gave me something worth living for. And I'm closing with the song. And I want you to listen to the words. Life was shattered and hope was gone crushing the load that I bore then out of the day
of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father and the sweet communion with the Holy Spirit, beloved, stay and remain with us until Jesus comes again and to that you and I can answer Amen. Shalom, be blessed, stay blessed and Maranatha.